we're going to start looking at arthropods. So we're in chapter 14. Arthropods are the largest phylum because they include insects, which is the largest group or class within this phylum. And that way they represent three-fourths of all species on Earth. A lot of them are marine arthropods, like crustaceans, so things like lobsters, barnacles, and so they're in subphylum crustacea. They all have flexible bodies, they have exoskeletons, they are segmented, so they have bilateral symmetry, and the big thing for arthropods is their jointed appendages. So they move by sets of these attached jointed appendages that are attached to the muscles of the main body. Looking at arthropods, we can look and see how they exhibit bilateral symmetry, and they have a chitinous exoskeleton, so something made up of essentially carbohydrate monomers. It's going to provide support, protection, increased surface area for muscle attachment, but because it's pretty immobile at the size that it is, it's flexible, but it's not going to stretch, that means that arthropods have to molt. They have to get rid of the exoskeleton as they grow, they absorb water to expand, that's going to harden their new exoskeleton after they get removed the old one. A lot of arthropods and subphylum crustacea are marine and sea epithelial gastropods, and their appendages are specialized for swimming, crawling, attaching to other animals, eating, and feeding. They have two pairs of antennae involving sensory nerves around them. We can look at a couple of examples of small crustaceans, copepods, barnacles. Those are just a couple. A copepod is something that is planktonic. It uses mouth parts to filter food, kind of similar to sponges. Some may swim, but a lot are just parasitic. Barnacles, those are filter feeders as well, and they attach to living surfaces like that of a whale. They have theory or feathery legs that seek water for food, and their larvae can swim and essentially attach onto some living substrate before metamorphosizing into adults. Here we can see the base anatomy of a barnacle. We can see here, see here it has appendages extending, and here they're retracted. These appendages here are the theory that they move about in order to filter food. Other examples are amphipods and isopods. Isopods are parasitic fish lice that are dorso ventrally flattened. And essentially, it's a marine pill bug, whereas amphipods have flattened bodies as well. And they're things like the beach hopper, or essentially stuff that's more common in shore debris or seaweed, or they burrow into the skin of whales. But some are planktonic, meaning they are filter feeders. Here are some amphipods and isopods. So here we see up at the top a beach hopper, often found on a marine mammal, and then a sea louse down here, which is a marine pill bug. Other small crustaceans include essentially shrimp like planktonic filter feeders, the euphysids, essentially krill, really common in cold water, they usually swim in pools, and they have an exclusive food source. They are primarily a food source for whales, penguins, and fish. They usually eat fish. Decapods are some of the largest. They have 10 legs, hence their name, and they have a lot of commercial use. They have a well-developed carapace that encloses a cephalothorax, and the rest of their body is called an abdomen. Shrimp and lobster are probably the arthropods you're most familiar with when someone says crustacea. You probably think crustaceans, and you immediately go to shrimp and lobster. Maybe a hermit crab. Shrimp are scavengers. They feed on detritus at the bottom of bodies of water. Some might even remove parasites from the skin of fish. Lobsters are also marine scavengers, but they can be predators that crush mollusks and sea urchins. And hermit crabs are not true crabs, but they hide their soft body in an empty shell. Here is the basic anatomy for a clayfish which is an example of a crustacean. They have modified helipeds or front legs that usually develop into claws or pinchers. They have two sets of antennae, the second one longer than the first. They have eyes, they have a merged head with a thorax, and so that is going to give a cephalothorax with an abdomen. 
They have jointed exoskeletons and jointed legs. They have femorettes in the back, which are called theopods. And they have a tail, called a telson, which might have modified uropods, all used for some locomotion or walking. In a arthropod, they have a complete digestive system, including a stomach and intestines. They have a heart, and they also have a brain. Crabs are also crustaceans. They have kind of a more condensed abdomen under a large cephalothorax. We could note that if it has a V-shaped abdomen, it is female. If it has a U-shaped abdomen, it is female. You can see on the right it has the top and the females at the bottom. They use their modified claws and large legs to be highly mobile and walk not only forward and backward, but also sideways. Crabs are scavengers, but definitely also predators. Some of them have specialized diets, whether after seaweed and organic matter or coral mucus. Others go after prey like fish. They live along rocky shores or sandy beaches. Sand crabs actually live most of their life on land, but may return to the ocean to release eggs. Their feeding and digestion varies if we're looking just at crustaceans in general. They go from filter feeders to true predators. Some use bristles, but use their appendages and claws. And some are going to be more mobile than others. Some are parasitic, others are not. And we're going to see that the modifications make crustaceans as a essentially subphylum of phyla arthropoda, a very interesting category. Decapods, we can look at them for digestion. They have two chamber stomachs connecting to a digestive gland that secretes enzymes and absorbs nutrients. And that means that their digestion is primarily extracellular. They break down cells outside of the gastrointestinal tract and then absorb it into the intestines and their intestines are formed in the anal canal where they get rid of waste products. They have an open circulatory system which is more common in crustaceans than a closed circulatory system but it still works to distribute nutrients. They have ganglia or simple brains so they definitely can respond to stimuli. They have compound eyes and a keen sense of smell. They have status cysts which are a modified organ for balance but not quite as complicated as a complex membrane and or organ of corti that we see in vertebrate mammals. They have a lot of different behaviors. They can be very complex or in the vertebrates in how they mate or how they are exposed or try to threaten other organisms, even other crustaceans. Their body posture is important for their movement. They move their legs and their antennae to essentially establish dominance, or to help even settle dispute between neighbors, and for courtship. There are usually separate sexes in most crustaceans, and the males use specialized appendages to transfer their sperm directly to a female. For example, in decapods, we find that the reproduction takes place after molting, and females, therefore, after molting, are able to store sperm and use the sperm periodically on different batches of eggs. And most of them are going to have plankton-looking larvae, and those larvae then will develop through numerous stages to eventually look like an adult. Here are just some of the dinosaur stages for things like shrimp, lobsters, and barnacles, and crabs, and copepods. You can see they develop from essentially kind of a rudimentary phase, which would be quite small, and then they slowly change into the adult. Horseshoe crabs are another example of a marine arthropod. They're one of the only surviving members of class Neoprenata, and a lot of times we find more fossil records of the ancient ancestors of horseshoe crabs than horseshoe crabs themselves. And there's only five living species left. They're not really true crabs. They are going to live on the bottoms of shallow waters in the Pacific Gulf Coast, North America, and some in Southeast Asia. They do occasionally emerge on beaches, beaches, and that is to reproduce. We can also look at sea spiders, which are from the class Echinogonida, and they do superficially resemble spiders, but they are not spiders. They have a large proboscis, which is a modified mouthpiece, much similar to insects. 
and that's about going to our, you know, soft and dirty places to see me, we have Bob Owens, and they were coming in cold water, but they don't like her all the time. So here we can see the general anatomy of the sea spider. You can see that it has a modified proboscis up top and it has a walking one that goes up and down the proboscis. So it does have something external to the arachnid. Other arthropods are insects. And insects are primarily going to have three pairs of legs as opposed to having four pairs of legs like the arachnid. And with our next PowerPoint, we are going to look at not only arachnids, we'll return to insects and look at some of the variations therein. And we'll also at the end of that look at a couple.